If you're in the market for an M4 MacBook Air, congratulations. I think you're going to be really stoked on this laptop, especially if you're coming from Intel. So if you're still running an Intel machine, now is the time to finally upgrade to an M4 Air. And even if you're coming from an M1 Air and if you're starting to push the limits of the envelope of what an M1 machine can do, then the M4 Air is definitely going to be there for you for a good number of years because the M4 chip is such a powerful chip you really are going to be able to do newer things and more heavier multitasking on the M4 compared to the M1. So the first thing we have to talk about is memory because memory has a direct impact on the performance of your system when you open up multiple applications at the same time. So with Apple bumping the base spec from 8 to 16 gigs of RAM on this M4 MacBook Air, I believe that's a good amount of memory that you're going to be able to use this laptop for a good couple of years if you're doing the basics. So if you're a student, for example, running, say, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, the Google Docs, um, maybe and just having other applications like your Mail app or your Music app or preview running at the same time. If you're doing things that are not necessarily going to push and stress an M4 system on a chip, 16 gigs is going to be fine for a good couple of years. Now, when we talk about 24 gigs of RAM, I think that's a somewhat interesting memory configuration. And what I see you doing with six or with 24 gigs of RAM is you're going to be able to start using professional level applications, things such as Final Cut Pro, maybe DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere. So if you really just want to start dabbling and starting to like push the envelope more on your system, I think 24 gigs of RAM is going to be appropriate for running professional level applications. And in the background, you can have say multiple browser tabs and still have your other applications running in the background. I think 24 gigs of RAM is the sweet spot for that sort of thing. 32 gigs of RAM is interesting. Now, I maxed out my M4 MacBook Air with 32 gigs of RAM and 2 terabytes of storage. And right now, for what I do in 2025, uh, 32 gigs of RAM is basically overkill because all I do on my stuff, like I said, I run Final Cut, I run browser tabs, I keep my background applications open at the same time, and if I really want to push the system, I can compress 5 multi-gigabyte folders using the compression tool in Mac OS and it can all handle this at the same time. So I can run things like the magnetic mask. The magnetic mask in Final Cut Pro eats up a lot of memory. And I can also have other applications, as I said, at the same time. So 32 gigs of RAM, depending on who you are, the user that you are, is going to be way more than enough here in 2025. And I anticipate 32 gigs to last a good couple of years, say five to seven years in the, in the future, without really pushing the limits of 32 gigs of RAM. If you're a professional, the MacBook Air is probably not going to be appropriate for you. So if you're the type of person to run multi, um, multiple simulations at the same time, emulation, virtual machines, rendering in Blender, or other 3D graphics programs, 32 gigabytes of RAM is going to be the minimum. And at that point, I think it's better off that you run the MacBook Pro. But if you're a hobbyist like I am, and if you just want the fastest system possible, and you really want to run as many things as you can, 32 gigabytes of RAM is going to carry you today and it's going to take you into the future, say five to seven years from now. The Achilles heel to any M4 MacBook Air is the amount of the base storage that comes with the system. Now, all of the M4 MacBook Air start at 256 gigabytes of storage, and I believe that is simply not enough. So if you can budget $200 more to get the 512, I think you're, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable. Because with 512, for instance, if you want to travel with this laptop and put any, same movies or TV shows on your system, you are going to need the extra storage. Now, if you want to do work and if you're fine with offloading your projects onto an external SSD like I do, then in those situations, then I think the 512 with external storage makes the most sense. I overspent and I overspect my computer when I got the two terabytes of storage in my system. Because to go from one terabyte to two terabytes it cost me an additional $360. And really, in terms of like just putting stuff onto the SSD, once again, I really don't do that much with the extra space because I do tend to edit off of external drives. So just be aware of that. It is, en it is possible not to get enough, and it is possible to overspend and get way more than you need. So I would say at the limit, if you really want to put a bunch of stuff onto your uh, SSD, get the one terabyte option. Anything else that doesn't fit, you can offload it or archive it to an external drive. And I believe that is the best way to work with these M4 MacBook Airs. And as I said, get at a minimum, please get at least 512 gigabytes of storage because you're going to stress out trying to fit things on a 256 gigabyte drive. 
One thing to consider that may not be obvious with the M4 MacBook Air is the color and the finish of the laptop. Personally, I like the aesthetic of the midnight color on the M4 Air. However, the problem with all of Apple's dark colored laptops, and this even extends to the space black in the MacBook Pro, is the fact that the darker colors are going to attract more fingerprints. And if it irritates you that you have to clean off the chassis with a microfiber almost every other time that you use the system, the darker colors are probably not going to be for you. Now with my M4 Air, I went the complete opposite. I chose the silver color. And the reason why is because I know silver is going to attract the least amount of fingerprints and it's not going to be totally visible as I use the laptop day to day. Now when it comes to the starlight and the sky blue colors, I think those colors are light enough such that they're not really going to show the fingerprints. So basically all of the laptops from the silver to the sky blue to the starlight, I believe those are good finishes to where the chassis is not going to show up that many fingerprints. But as I said, if you choose the midnight color, even though I like the design aesthetic of that color, it really is going to be picking up a bunch of fingerprints and over time that may bother you that you have to clean it up so often. The last thing to consider is the design flaw. Now over time, your keyboard is going to make contact with the display. And any oils and grease that are present on your keyboard is going to transfer over to the screen. And the thing is that over time, these oils and greases are going to penetrate the coating on the display. And at that point, those fingerprint marks are going to become permanent. Now, the only way to really see the effects of this is you have to shine a bright flashlight onto the screen because in normal lighting situations, you may be looking at your screen and everything looks perfectly fine and clean until these key bar marks start to show up. So the only way that you can really see this and catch this early is by shining the flashlight onto the display and then you can see all the markings on, uh, from the keyboard. So this is a known issue and someone said that they took their MacBook in to the Apple store to try and get it fixed and they wouldn't do it under warranty because it was classified as normal wear and tear or cosmetic damage. So that's just something to be aware of. You have to be really judicious about wiping off the screen with a microfiber Otherwise, you may miss it, and at that point, it may be too late because the oils did penetrate into that coating. So the M4 MacBook Air is really a great value for those looking for a new laptop in 2025. And I believe if you're coming from Intel, the M1 system on a chip, or if this is going to be your first Mac, I think you're going to be really pleased at the power that the M4 chip affords. So the only recommendation that I would say if you're looking for the best value is to bump up that storage from 256 to 512. Because at 256, you're really going to be stressing out in terms of putting like what type of media you can put on the SSD. If you're going to go on a trip and if you want to watch movies or TV shows, I really do think that bumping up the storage to 512 should be the minimum. And this is where Apple is going to start to get us over time. Because remember how long it took Apple to go from 8 to 16 gigs of RAM. I believe we're in the same type of situation when it comes to 256 gigabytes of storage. That's just the only thing I would uh, recommend at this point. So as I said, really great chip, a lot of headroom. It's going to have a lot of longevity to it, even with 16 gigs of RAM, because you can do most of your work on it. And as I said, if you want to start flexing your muscle and start to flex the chip, you can even do professional level stuff. I've seen people doing a 4K multicam on it with two cameras, and the timeline works perfectly fine. Now, other professionals are, there, are saying that when they try doing, say, 4Cam, 4K multicam, that's when you're going to start running into issues. So if you really are using this machine in a professional environment, I don't think the, the MacBook Air makes sense for you. Definitely get the M4 MacBook Pro, especially with the M4 Pro chip at least. But for most other people, even if you want to start getting into video editing and, and like more involved projects on your system, the M4 chip is definitely going to be able to get you by the very fast chip and at this point, the airline is getting so powerful that maybe in a couple of years, you may not see any performance difference between, say, the Air and the MacBook Pro. All right, so that's all I have to say about really knowing what you need to know about the M4 MacBook Air. All right, that's about it. Peace.